I hated school. <laughs> the violence, the bullying, the day-to-day -day put downs, it was almost as much as I could take. And that was from the staff. <laughs> and I'm not joking about that. It's my contention that secondary school, at least, only works for approximately a third of all students. And I'm not for a moment suggesting that they're maximising their learning potential, but they do learn to play the game. And as a result of that, they generally have positive relationships with staff and their peers, and they, and they learn some skills, and honestly, they end up in careers and in courses that they're moderately happy with or happy with. For the middle third, though, it's a pretty average outcome. These kids don't get a lot out of their education, but nor do they put a lot in either. They're the chronically underinvested, and they work out fairly quickly that the skills that they have are not those that are valued by the school. But for the final third, it's a pretty disastrous outcome. They either can't or won't play the game, and as a result of that, their relationships with their staff are, are honestly fairly terrible. They often don't develop the skills that they need, and they certainly don't find their passions whilst they're at school. Now, my question today is how did we let learning get that bad? Something that in, in their formative years was something that was exciting and new, and we turned it into something that was so bad that we now have to measure attendance at school. We can't even get them to come and sit next to their friends and learn together, much less get them to actively involve themselves in a class. Now, part of that is actually the teacher's fault, okay? And I know teachers try really hard and I'm not bagging them in any way, but the reality is that most teachers come from the top third, the third for which school made sense. They knew the rules and they then ended up in that career. And that can be a problem because they don't really understand how the rest of us think and work and our experience of school. For a lot of students, Going to school is like getting on a bus. 30 students get on, the teacher assumes their rightful position at the front of the class, they take the role and they set off. And they set off at a blinding speed. And they can basically, they're driving along, they're making great time, a little history on the right, a little Pythagoras on the left. But I'm sorry, we can't stop because we've got a schedule to keep to. Now the problem is some kids are so smart that they could jump out of the moving bus, circle it several times and jump back on. For others, they're in fact, they've missed some sort of interconnecting stop several uh, stops ago. And yet the, the education system marches on. Temples, now my question to you is, what if we were to enable students to design and control their own education? What if instead of doing education to students, we actually allowed them to use the staff and the school and the wider community to manage and design their own education? Now, at Templestowe College, or TC as it's become known, we're very proud to be a Victorian government public school. We're very proud of that fact, and we comprise uh, approximately 600 young people aged between the ages of 12 and 18 and approximately 70 staff and volunteers. And at TC, we encourage students to drive their own learning and to manage their own education. So what does that, what does that actually look like? Well, we have a saying that yes is the default. So the first thing about that is if any staff, student or parent has a suggestion or a request, the answer has to be yes, unless it would take too much time, too much money or negatively impact on somebody else. And so I had a young boy called Josh and Josh's passion was physics, but he was in year seven. And he said, I wanna sit in the back of a year 12 physics class. And we said, well, Let's apply the test. It wasn't going to take us any time. It wasn't going to take us any money. But could it negatively impact on somebody else? Well, the answer is yes. Because if Josh had have actually done the intervening five years of science, he might have the answers to the questions that he wanted to ask the teacher. So we said, Josh, you can be in the class, you just can't ask any questions. 
You can do your own research on the internet. We can get you a tutor or you can ask your teacher after class. But you just can't ask any questions. So a couple of weeks in, I went and saw Josh and the rest of his class and I spoke to a few individuals and I said, look, what's it like having this little fella in your class? And they said, well, it's a bit weird. <laughs> and I said, why is that? And they said, because he knows more than we do. <laughs> so the following year, we enrolled Josh formally in year 11, but his timetable lined up better with that of a year nine. So Josh became a year eight, enrolled in year nine, studying year 11, having done year 12 in year seven. <laughs> As you can see, it was becoming a little confusing for all concerned, particularly the photographers. Where do I go? <laughs> now, as our students have increasingly taken control of their own learning, we've been forced to examine and remove a lot of those structural things that we associate with traditional education. And a lot of them, to be honest, we're going, why are we doing that? And a lot of them are just adding to the rigidity of the system. Now, at TC, we want to be a supportive community, empowering students to manage their individualised learning and turn their ideas into reality. But what does that actually look like? Well, for a start, our students determine what they learn. So once they've established their basic literacy and numeracy, which most students do within their first 12 months at the school, they get to, to select all the subjects. 100% of their course load, they decide from more than 120 electives. And that's part of an individualised learning plan that each student has that they devise with the assistance of their parents. And there is some support provided by the school, but the bulk of that work in developing that five-year individualised learning plan is done by the student with the support of their parents. A few years ago, we actually asked our students, if you could study anything in the world, what would it be? Anything. What do you think their top response was? didn't hear it. Coding, no, they wanted to design computer games. <laughs> now, they were smart enough to know, it was a little bit more, you know, a little bit less than coding, but they were smart enough to know that if they, if they proposed playing computer games that they wanted to learn, that that might not fly. <laughs> but designing them, that might fly. And so we started uh, the first of our uh, computer gaming design classes. We also have a working with animals elective and we have our own alpacas, sheep, goats, snakes, lizards, fish, birds and insects, all of which the students manage. We have a subject called geek studies. <laughs> this is probably an unusual audience. I think I would have to run more geek studies classes for you. Uh, this is a young fellow by the name of Xavier. He uh, is perhaps the next evil scientist, um, <laughs> but we're trying to encourage him to use his talents for good. He has, he has uh, designed a Tesla coil, which you see him standing there with a big switch, which he's ready to throw. It was originally uh, powered by beer bottle capacitors uh, filled with salt water. It'll generate a two million volt lightning strike. We have to operate it in a Faraday cage because it was playing havoc with our enrolment numbers. <laughs> we have our own permaculture garden. We have a thing called coffee club and the young girl that you see there, her name is Scout. She's a professional barista. She has done external training and is qualified. She is employed by two, canteen, uh, two of our coffee club managers, uh, Jess and Michaela and they employ a number of staff uh, during a lunchtime, usually around seven. They're all paid employees. They make a very mean coffee and uh, they provide cakes. Uh, one of them even employs a busker, a student busker, to add to the ambiance of, uh, <laughs> of the coffee club. Now, I think the remarkable thing about this is that none of them are more than 13 years of age.
Now, if a student wants to learn something that we don't offer, they have the opportunity of doing a PLP, a personalised learning project. And they come up with their learning objective, uh, they write a plan uh, with their learning mentor, the person guiding them, and they can complete that. We also follow uh, the, the research in regards to homework, which basically we don't ascribe homework to junior students. There's plenty of research to say that the students would in fact get more academic benefit from an extra hour's sleep than putting them through the torture of homework. <laughs> Instead, we ask the students to do something called home learning. It's not a play on words. The students have to design and document 10 hours of home learning per week, but they get to decide what that's going to be. So it could include finishing off some work that was done in class, it could ex include exploring a concept that was covered in class that they just didn't get. But it could include learning an additional language, it could include uh, going to scouts or learning a musical instrument or an art project or building a science model or cooking a meal for the family. A number of our parents have asked, could it include cooking all meals for the family? <laughs> I did have to explain that no, that's actual child slavery, that is not home learning, quite two, two different things. We blur the distinction between what is a staff member and what is a student. So we actually employ our students to act in reception. We employ them to do some of our maintenance tasks. We employ them to teach other students in things like yoga, martial arts, squash, etc. We employ some of our students to tutor other students. So they actually see that there's an economic reality and a benefit to being uh, capable in maths and English. So we actually pay them to tutor other students. And the research around that says that it's just only minorly less effective than being tutored by a teacher and obviously far more cost effective. <laughs> now, one of the issues that I have uh, with TED conferences, I don't know what your favourite video, but mine is Sir Ken Robinson. And one of the issues that I have is that Sir Ken's been around for seven years. His video's been uh, watched seven million times. But the problem that I have is that whilst we all pump up our tyres in here and go out ready to conquer the world, unfortunately I'm not seeing the change that's needed in our education system. And if we sit back and wait for some sort of uh, educational messiah to come and solve all our problems, it's really not going to happen. And so my challenge for you today is to go out there and be the change that you want to see. And if you're a student, you know, it, it's called, TC is called TC, take control. It's called take control for a reason, because if you wait to be offered it, you'll be waiting a long time. So I encourage students to get involved with their student representative councils and really push the school to be not only, let's forget student voice, we actually want students to take a control in their learning. We actually have students on the selection panels that select staff. We actually have students on our curriculum committees. They are the victims of the curriculum. They should have some input into it. We also have students on our college council and on our school leadership team, the, le the team that actually make every decision in the school, which I think is, is, a, is a great thing. If you're a parent, don't sit back and, and complain about the education system. And, and there's no doubt, really, that it's broken. Okay, I don't, I don't get many people going, no, no, it's good. Uh, the, the reality is we all know it's broken. Get on your college council or on your school board and push for change and support those, those students and the staff that actually want to make a difference. If you're a teacher, um, my question is, why aren't you in school? It's a Friday. Um, <laughs> But if, if you're a teacher, you have the opportunity to actually make a difference to the students in your care. And try and remember something. It's not your education. We've done it, okay? It's the kids' education. What, what are we afraid of? Why won't we give them control over what they want to learn? 
And if you're a principal, I think that's an, it's just the most privileged position to work with young people. It's, it's an amazing experience. It keeps me young. I am an 18-year-old imprisoned in a 47-year-old body. But <laughs> if you're a principal, protect and guide those students that want to take control of their own education. Protect and shield those teachers from all the, the things and the requirements that we're meant to do. Now, I can't say that at TC we've got it all right. You know, there are certainly things that we need to improve on and work on. But what I can tell you is when you take the risk and you allow students to take control of their own learning, truly amazing things happen. Thank you.